Well, uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm honoured to be here and uh, my presentation um, is going to focus on applied research in languages for specific purposes, which Philip mentioned. And uh, this, uh, my uh, PowerPoint slides um, are going to be rather different to uh, Philip's, uh, which were kind of mind maps with squares. And mine are going to be <laughs> um, bullet points. Uh, and what kind of impact it has on the audience uh, would be a good question for applied linguists to explore. <laughs> So, um, uh, I'm going to start with um, um, ESP, uh, or this is how LSP started. ES uh, ESP was the predecessor of LSP in a way, because, but there was also a Germanic tradition of uh, um, what in Swedish is called Faxbrock. <laughs> but uh, nowadays, um, um, LSP um, uses uh, techniques and uh, uh, approaches which are very much related to ESP. And um, well, the only reason I have uh, the E here is that uh, in um, uh, the late 80s, uh, the first uh, um, researchers of ESP have, um, they started uh, trying to draw trees which would uh, try to determine the differences between uh, languages for general purposes, uh, you know, um, like everyday conversations, etc., and the, the, the kind of language that is taught at school or um, uh, in um, uh, language schools, or like secondary schools or language schools, uh, and languages for specific purposes. Um, which could either, this kind of instruction could either take place in academic settings or in uh, occupational um, settings or in professional settings. And um, then there were some disagreements as to how they relate and how they interact. But in any case, um, um, we may not entirely agree with the way the tree is drawn, but it nevertheless shows us um, some um, basic distinctions um, in different kinds of um, specific purposes. So um, ESP, it's not really um, um, a discipline per se, it's more like an approach to um, uh, teaching the language, but also an approach to um, um, researching the language, because um, the approach to the teaching is very much based on learners' needs, and learners' needs need to be researched. Um, and most of the research in ESP um, has been focused on texts and discourses, more recently on spoken discourses as well. And it, ha it has become particularly uh, famous and successful in the field of academic writing for graduate students. This is where ESP has really been uh, you know, really influential and is probably the main approach that is used worldwide today for teaching um, academic writing to um, a second language or third language, etc. Uh, graduate students and researchers. Right, so in other words, this language for specific purpose is concerned with kind, like particular kinds of purpose that have become in institutionalized. Um, right, and another um, um, key um, concept in LSP is the concept of the target situation. So the target situation that um, our learners uh, will find themselves in when they finish their studies. So uh, the instruction um, in LSP is never uh, based on a textbook or it may use different elements of textbooks but it's, it's supposed to be tailor-made to um, suit the learner's needs based on the analysis of the, of the target situation. Yeah? And then determining the balance between the learner's lacks, necessities and uh, wants. Well, this is quite old, but it still works today. <laughs> so, um, and uh, well, uh, in particular, in uh, academic contexts and professional contexts, of course, um, the specificity is important for reasons of uh, precision and clarity, uh, which are vital in uh, high-stake communication. 
So what about this LSP practitioner or researcher? Well, um, considering the range of disciplines and the range of um, uh, specializations that we may be dealing with, we may of course be seen as a um, kind of jack of all trades. Uh, if you have to teach students of uh, business, students of engineering and students of uh, uh, musicology and biology, so how can you possibly know um, uh, the language for specific purposes in all those disciplines? Yeah. Um, uh, so how is it possible to, to find out what those um, uh, students actually need if you don't know the content, if you're not a content specialist? So therefore, LSP professionals need to work quite closely with and research the target discourse community or the target um, situation and the target discourse of uh, the students that they're dealing with. So um, today, uh, the LSP is informed by um, a quite a variety of different approaches and techniques and um, LSP professionals uh, work um, by collecting and um, examining data from uh, the target community, um, often with the help of um, content specialists, uh, subject specialists, um, and this kind of data can include uh, sample texts, yeah? but also um, audio and video recordings because the, the study of spoken discourses have, has become very um, important and uh, is gaining more and more um, Intra, uh, well, in more and more import, sorry, importance in uh, LSP and at KTH there, there have been uh, several um, studies concerned with uh, um, English in particular, English for uh, specific purposes um, and concerned with English as a lingua franca uh, in academic settings and oral presentations yeah, in academic settings. So. Um, now, so these discourses yeah, then can be analyzed at different levels, all those different levels that uh, um, Philip mentioned in his first slide where we had linguistics. Yeah, so um, an LSP professional can look at the, the overall structure of uh, a specific text or the, the rhetorical organization of a presentation, but can also look at the lexicogrammatical features or syntactic features or even phonetics yeah, of... Um, um, uh, the target discourse. So in other words, LSP, LSP professionals uh, and researchers need to apply uh, different kinds of uh, dimensions that we find in linguistics. So um, another important concept in LSP, as you can imagine, uh, having seen the previous slides, is the concept of needs analysis, which today is informed by uh, different um, approaches and different techniques including discourse on genre analysis that have become uh, branches of applied linguistics and quite um, so sort of with substantial research um, in in that field the corpus linguistics collecting um, uh, large amounts of uh, written or spoken uh, discourse and then analyzing them using uh, concordance so software and this was the original focus yeah, of uh, LSP because it was very much based on the study of texts uh, or spoken interaction. But now more and more, um, we are beginning to look at uh, the context of um, these texts and spoken interaction because obviously they are interrelated yeah? and we need to know why we write one way or another and why we speak this way. So also surveys and ethnographic methods are used in order uh, to determine the context of a, a particular discourse use. So uh, this, the target situation that I mentioned um, earlier and the target community uh, the, is also referred to as a discourse community, a group of people uh, who use the same kind of language because they are united by uh, common objectives. And of course, there would be uh, vast differences in uh, discourse community in a discourse community of biologists compared to a discourse communities of historians yeah, but also within specializations there will also be differences maybe fewer but nevertheless uh, uh, visible and these differences wouldn't only concern um, the use of uh, specific terms yeah 
In fact, vocabulary and terminology would probably be uh, the most uh, superficial, well, it wouldn't be superficial, but it would be the easiest things to explain. Yeah? But more like the purposes and the communicative needs and goals of uh, different discourse communities uh, will impact the way that um, um, communication functions. So um, in some areas it would be important to um, exchange information or you know, promote a product or establish partnerships, collaboration. Yeah? We need a specific, specific language for that, yeah? not only words. Yeah? Or um, a specific kind of rhetoric to, to request or to, um, to persuade or to, bid, uh, to build goodwill, which is um, becoming uh, very common in or try uh, in some professional activities. So this brings me to the concept of genre. Um, and this is something that um, KTH people are working with um, and um, have probably explored and have used in their teaching. Um, a genre um, is basically um, a category of discourse which can either be spoken or written and there are different genres that we find in uh, academic and professional settings. I'm not going to read Swales' definition because, uh, well, he's excellent at writing, but his definitions tend to be a bit uh, <laughs> somewhat, um, um, yeah, complicated. Uh, so uh, I I'm just going to uh, show you the um, uh, examples of some learner genres, yeah, uh, which um, may, of course, have variations between specialization. An essay in philosophy will not be exactly the same as uh, an essay in economics. Yeah? Um, but nevertheless, they will all be student essays. And professional academic genres like dissertation or research article, and then professional genres like technical reports, invitations. Or, and as LSP professionals working with, P, with students, uh, we need to address the communicative needs in academia, but we also need to think about the uh, target professional situation, which probably Britt Louise will address uh, uh, pretty soon. Um, so there are these two dimensions to LSP um, in university settings um, that need to be addressed. Both what you need language you need for studies, for studies in parallel language environment or ELF, envir English as a lingua franca environment, but also when you finish, <laughs> you know, when you need to write or communicate for professional purpose, it's different from communicating in ed educational settings where you're supposed to show that you've learned something, for instance, and in an organization where you're supposed to um, solve a problem. Yeah. Um, okay. So that there is this big question of uh, disciplinarity and how discourses vary depending on the nature of the discipline. And within KTH, of course, there will be different kinds of engineering, but also some social sciences and uh, um, kind of uh, other fields, you know, that uh, will probably share the same academic genres, but nevertheless, uh, the disciplines th themselves will have different purposes and different epistemologies, different ways of obtaining knowledge and uh, uh, different types of questions they're trying to answer. And all these differences, of course, will impact the way that languages are used. Um, and for, for someone who works with these students and someone um, who needs to uh, prepare them uh, to work in um, professional environments, uh, these differences are quite important and they need to be explored. So uh, this is a very uh, solid basis for um, uh, starting research yeah? um, and uh, also looking into different ways that uh, language or different languages are used uh, in um, academic settings like in parallel language use in multilingual settings or English as a lingua franca settings. Okay, well, and now I've got five minutes, so I'm just going to say a few words about the center that um, I'm responsible for so that we can also see how um, what is being done at Stockholm University and how we can possibly uh, share experiences and collaborate. Uh, 
The Center for Academic English is relatively new. It's not uh, as old as uh, the communication unit, <laughs> but uh, um, uh, we, we are uh, part of the Department of English. Um, and it was set up with, uh, with the aim of providing um, LSP instruction for academic and professional purposes at Stockholm University. And uh, we don't simply, uh, as I say, use textbooks. We also conduct quite a lot of research on academic and professional language use across disciplines, which at SU would be uh, primarily humanities and social sciences. So at KTH, uh, there is space for uh, more research uh, into the same kinds of issues in engineering uh, and related disciplines. Um, and then is, uh, our, our center also provides um, LSP teacher development courses so that we can um, also um, educate some of our own teachers and uh, um, raise interest in LSP research amongst our students who have also collected quite a lot of interesting data by now about um, language uses uh, across SU. Yeah, they, they sometimes do BA projects or master uh, dissertations uh, on um, issues of um, language use in academic and professional settings. Um, so our courses tend to be research-based, uh, learner-oriented in the sense that you need to conduct the research to meet the target needs of the learner. Um, so they uh, tend to be tailor-made um, either for specific departments or uh, uh, the tailor-made element is uh, incorporated into the course design in the way that, uh, for instance, each student uh, needs to adapt the, uh, the main assignments or the, the major projects to their own context. They don't, work, don't all work on the same thing. They, they have to um, um, justify their choice of an assignment and then um, show how uh, it is related to the context they're working in. Okay, and then our research and needs analysis look into these three um, um, elements. Well, these are just some examples of the courses that we offer, uh, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level. Um, we have even started um, a professional language program, um, which will prepare um, communication specialists um, who will work in um, um, multilingual or parallel language environments um, in the future. That's the first year we've, joined, uh, we've launched the BA together with the, the Department of Scandinavian, Language, uh, Scandinavian Languages. That's what you call Nordiska Sprok. Um, and so, um, yeah, and um, of course there is space for, for more, but uh, we are basically short of space, physical space, to be offering our courses because we have <laughs> more and more students and very few rooms in um, Friskazi. Okay, so um, that's all I had to say for today. So thank you very much for your attention. Am I okay with time? Oh, thank you.